Well, hello and welcome to It's Not Over with Dr. Dan Farrell. My name is Jordan. We have a guest with us today. His name is Charles, and it's a pleasure to have him with us. This week, uh, the title of this week, and and maybe even going into next week's uh, programs, is called The Mystery of Christmas. Mm -hmm. Dr. Farrell, how are you? It's good. It's good to see you, Jordan, and Charles. Good to have you. Brother Charles, he teaches at our Bible college, and I don't know if you can see him on YouTube. Hopefully not. Um... (laughs) But he teaches at our Bible college. He's also uh, distinguished as our Sunday school superintendent. And he has a couple kids, and we don't mention them on the air. But uh, I just, we really respect and love this uh, young man. Charles, say hello to everybody. Hey, how are you? I'm fine. Yeah, thank you uh, for the show. Um, this is, is this your first time on our program? No, I've been on the program before. That's what I thought. Yeah. I thought so. Okay. All right, good. So uh, you know our how we do things. So we're in Luke chapter 2 and verse 1. Uh, Jordan, just read verse 1 through 4, would you? And it came to pass in those days that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed. And this taxing was first made when Cyrenius was governor of Syria. And all went to be taxed, every one to his own city. And Joseph also went up from Galilee out of the city of Nazareth unto Judea under the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David. All right, now we're going to talk about this. Of course, this is the mystery of Christmas, and of course, much of what goes on in Christmas is pagan. We know that. A lot of It always amazes me when there's some young preacher or some young Christian, he discovers that Christmas is pagan. He's the only one that's discovered this. What a pioneer spirit. You're the one uh, who taught me that. You know that, right? Yeah, yeah. But you notice that there's a lot of... Th- you know, I'd like to teach a class sometime at our college on what do we do in culture that is not necessarily biblical, but it's not contrary to what the Bible says, you see. And, uh, you know, I I don't know. The way you hear people preach against Christmas, you think that we're saying that we're bowing down and worshiping the Christmas tree. Uh, I could care less about the Christmas tree. You can take it or leave it, really. I think they're pretty. You know, I like the lights. I like Christmas music. I like good food. I like getting together with family. I like giving gifts, and I like getting gifts. You know, I think it's a it's a gas. You know, I enjoy that. Um, but do I think that Christ was born December 25th? I do not. No. no. And do I think that Christ is the reason for the season? I'm less now than ever before. I mean, Christmas is about getting drunk. It's about time off. It's about uh, lusting after things and covetousness, you know, the materialism, right? And it's also now, I would say most secular homes, wouldn't you agree, it's more about Santa Claus and Rudolph and Christmas magic. and Yeah. I mean, that's what it's about. It's not. There's a lot of family tradition and nostalgia along with that. But, yeah, it's a lot. I mean, it's. Did you have have fun Christmas time when you were growing up? Oh, yeah, definitely. It was all about presents, though. Yeah, but you did. But were there other things like enjoying your parents, your brothers, your sisters, whatever? Yeah, you always enjoy going to the grand grandparents' house or whatever right. because you didn't see them very often. Right. So there's always that family aspect that people. And Jordan, do you have fond memories of Christmas, or does it? You think it has distracted you from your Christian growth? Um, well, I grew up in a Christian home, so no, I, I don't feel like there was a distraction. I mean, we always started off Christmas morning before we ever opened presents with. Mm-hmm. You know, the Christmas story, you know, the Bible, the Word mm-hmm. of God, and a short devotion, you know, and it was it was more about Jesus Christ and why he came. He came to save sinners, and, and um, you know, so I, I kind of knew, you know, based on my background and my culture, what it was about. But obviously, I really enjoyed the presence the mo- most, mm-hmm. and, and as I got older, um, especially as I got, you know, married, started having my own family expanding, I really enjoy just mainly the family time, mm-hmm. getting together and getting back together with all my siblings and, mm-hmm. um, you know, the food, the, the the Christmas music in the background. You can kind of hear it a little mm-hmm. bit and the warmth and the laughter and, you know, kids mm-hmm. screaming and running around. That That's, you know, that's more fun to me than the presents yeah. now. But I still, man, when I'm, my mind and my spirit is right, I think, man, Christ came. Christ humbled himself and became a man. That's that amazing. always meant that always meant something to me, even growing up. Even though I liked the, I didn't get many presents when I was a kid. We were going through a poor spell, you know, and I get one present and maybe an apple and some nuts, and that was it. 
But I was thrilled with that. That's more than other kids got. But what I love was to smell the turkey, mm. mom cooking. Mom was always happy around Christmas time. You know, she loved decorating the tree and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. And I like the happiness. That's another thing I like. Life is so full of sadness sometimes. I like happiness. Yeah. And um, and I'll tell you something else too. When you go out and about in the community, there's more happiness out there. People are more cheerful. Merry Christmas. Happy holidays. Right. The music. I like the music. Most of it. I don't like stupid rap music and rock music that we have today. They prostitute the holiday, I think. I think Christmas, really, in America, it's all about nostalgia. Really. That's why when you contemporize it too much, you know, rocking around the Christmas tree. Da, da, I mean, I don't know. I just you can get kind of crazy with that stuff. But I do recognize that we, even though Christ wasn't born in December, and even though we, Christ is not the reason for the season, and even though I hate the word mass on the end of Christ, Christ mass, I hate that junk. I wish I'd come up with another name. If you guys could, if you guys could come up with another name for Christmas, I'll pay you twenty bucks. Wow. You know, twenty dollars. Because I'd like to have another name, but instead of, instead of saying Merry Christmas, I thought about uh, Christ most. You know, Christ like is. That. You know, but it doesn't sound right. Christ most. You know, I'd like to come up with another name. I don't like Chris Mass, you know, but I love the happiness. I love the family. I love the wholesomeness. And I think Paul said, look, if you're going to recognize a day, do it under the Lord. If you're not going to recognize a day, don't do it under the Lord. He said, well, the heathen did. Well, the heathen did a lot of things. I mean, what month is this? I mean, the, the months are named after the various gods. So are the days of the week. There's a lot of stuff that we do that's pagan. It's not just Christmas. Mm -hmm. Um but here what we see, this is a night much to be remembered. In fact, that's what it says about the Passover in Exodus twelve forty two. It's a night much to be observed unto the Lord. Uh, when the Titanic went down April 14th, 1912, Walter Lord wrote a book, A Night to be Remembered. Uh, during the Revolutionary War of the 1776, George Washington attacked the German Haitians on Christmas night while the Haitians were sleeping off their German ale. And they said, it's a night... Never to be forgotten. So we do seem to understand that there's something special about just the commemoration when Christ was born. That song, O Holy Night, seems to capture it. O Holy Night, when Christ was born. So let's talk about this, and uh, we'll finish tomorrow. Many theories why Christmas is so commercialized. I think one, Charles said it, tradition. It's a moneymaker. You know, some of these companies... These stores like J.C. Penney's and Macy's, they make so much money at Christmas time, it carries them for the next nine months. Mm -hmm. It can make or break the retailer. Correct. They've got to make money at Christmas time or else they're in trouble. Um, I think, too, there's um, there's a lot of fun. that You know, Jordan brought it up and so did you. Can we please settle this? It's okay to have fun as long as you don't sin. You know, your kid gets a brand new truck. It gets a brand new G.I. Joe. And you know, what? that's not very spiritual, is it? But remember when you were a kid? You loved getting stuff like that. You got a video game or you got a sl race slot car thing or you got an electric train. Mm -hmm. I don't know why it is that you know, some Christians are just a bunch of pious gas bags. Their underwear is too tight. You know, Let a kid be a kid. Now, you can spoil them. I get it. Right. And then, of course, there's religious loyalties. Uh, the, the Roman Catholic Church, they worship the Madonna. Well, I don't. I don't worship Mary. So allow me to cite another reason why I think there is something wholesome about Christmas. And I'll tell you what it is. One of the few times that mom and dad will actually really spend some quality time with their kids. Now you, you probably spend quality time with your kids. You do too. There's a lot of dads they don't. Hmm. They don't. But at Christmas time they do. I had a kid tell me, he says, you know why I love Christmas? And I go, why? He goes, my dad stays home and get to spend time with my dad. I had a kid tell me that. Well, that's something. And then there's family dinner. Some families are so fractured, they are never sit down to eat a meal. At Christmas time, you get to sit down and eat a meal. I think that's worth something. And then, what about those songs? Why are those songs so popular? Oh, there's no place like home for the holidays. Man, that's a great song. Or I'll be home for Christmas. You can count on. Or chestnuts roasting on an open fire. Why do those songs so resonate with us? It's because it's pointing us to the home. You know, I wonder if homosexuals can sing that song. You know, chestnuts roasting on an open fire. Um... You know, I, I think that we know what a home is. 
A home is not two homosexuals in a kitchen cooking a turkey. A home is a mom, a dad, grandparents. They're trying to prostitute that uncles. though all over, um, all over the media and all over, um, like networking, TV shows. They really are pushing it hard, hard. Oh, really? Two dads and uh, just recently, Coles came out with an ad on television, which I hate because I love, uh, you know, to shop at at Coles. But they came out and two guys. You know, and, and he goes, uh, and they're doing the whole Star Wars thing. I am your father. And then all of a sudden the camera backs off and there's another guy. I am your father. Oh, gag. What is yeah, wrong with like, Coles, man? What is their problem? Uh, I don't get it. I just don't. Well, I'll tell you what. That's And so they're what, what they're promoting that that is a home. It's okay to have two daddies, two mommies, you know, and... Uh, it's more. It's it's weird. I don't understand this, but they're promoting more the two dads than two women. Well, maybe people need to start targeting these stores and say, "Hey, guess what? I'm not going to shop at your store anymore." You know, I knock this stuff off. What are you doing? You catering to two percent of the population? Less than two percent. It's ridiculous. And I also think there's some wholesome romance that goes on to to still feel appreciated by your husband, by your wife, and then again the nostalgia. So I'll tell you something else too. Now, I don't think it's going to happen this Christmas, but there's some unwritten rule that we think there ought to be peace on earth, goodwill toward men. And if there ever ought to be peace on earth, it ought to be Christmas Eve night when Christ was born. Now there isn't. The Muslims will ruin that. You watch. The Muslims will do something stupid, uh, these jihadists on Christmas Eve. But uh, the, the gift give, giving, the parties, So, but this Christmas magic, is there a miracle on 34th Street? Is there really a Santa Claus? And this is what I want to get to, and we'll finish it tomorrow, is the broken dreams. Um, since Santa cares so much for children, I wish he'd protest against abortion. Why don't they have a Santa commercial that says, please stop killing children? But they don't do that, do they? Or, let's be painfully honest, materialism, toys, and Christmas does not fix everything. You can give a kid $1,000 worth of toys. That's not going to fix his life. That's not going to bring him joy in January, February, March. And I think there's millions of us that are trying to escape reality by watching the Santa Claus or Fred Claus or Scrooge or It's a Wonderful Life or The Grinch. And you're watching these programs trying to escape from the nasty now and now. So really, that's what we'll talk about tomorrow. Is there this mystique about Christmas? For too many, there isn't. All right. I'd like to thank you so much, dear audience, for tuning in and listening to our program here on It's Not Over with Dr. Dan Farrell. If you are listening, you're listening by way of uh, probably either YouTube or SermonAudio.com. And you can actually look at our faces and see what we look like uh, via YouTube um, and watch that uh, those those uh, little episodes there. Uh, we thank you so much for being a supporter. We really do. We appreciate it. If you have given money, um, and we really appreciate it if you have sp- uh, spent time praying and talking to God, asking God to bless the program, because uh, we need that. We need the wisdom of God. We need the power of the Holy Spirit in our lives. And uh, we hope that the power of the Holy Spirit works in your life as well. We hope he uses us in your lives. And if you want to, and if we have been a blessing to you, please go to MorningstarNetwork.org. MorningstarNetwork.org, there is a way that you can give financially, and it is a tax-deductible gift, um, and you will be using PayPal. And so it's very easy, very user-friendly, so please check that out, MorningstarNetwork.org. And you can check us out on Facebook, you can check us out on YouTube, you can check us out on SermonAudio.com, slash It's Not Over, and uh, try to get a hold of this. Please also try to to promote this. If you've enjoyed the program and you are and you love it, then please spread the word. Tell your friends, tell your family, tell church members, tell your pastor. Um, we would really appreciate that. Dr. Farrell is going to close now with a few comments. 1 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16, and without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifest in the flesh. I don't know about Christmas magic and the mystery of Christmas, but I know this. There's a mystery that engulfs the person of the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, fall in love with him. Get excited about what Christ has done, even in your life. And I think Christmas will be a lot more jolly for you. 